when you do have you know poor periods or poor games and you just constantly look at yourself as just a footballer, um, sometimes you can get down yourself. So to have something outside of that where you're, you're doing something or you're achieving something else is, is really important. Mark Murphy is one of only six players to play 300 games for the Carlton Football Club. Despite being eligible to join Brisbane as a father-son selection in 2005, Mark chose to enter the open draft and was selected with pick number one overall by Carlton. He captained the team from 2013 until 2018 and is a two-time club best and fairest winner. As good as it's ever got for Murph. While he had many great moments on the field, Mark also experienced plenty of challenges, leading the club during some very trying times. Now retired, how does Mark look back on what he's achieved and what does he have planned for the next phase of his life? This is The Plus Side, brought to you by Host Plus. Mark, thank you for your time. Thanks, Damon. Good to be here. The decision to retire was made some time ago. How are you dealing with the absolute finality of that decision? Yeah, I sort of knew uh, probably earlier in the season that it was, it was going to be my last last year. It's sort of been a weird finish. Like, I, you obviously never know how your retirement's going to mm. going to finish, but I uh, played my last game over there at Adelaide Oval. I think I had two beers in the change rooms with all the boys and um, that's sort of been about it. A weird feeling where you haven't been able to, yeah, sort of have that sort of final closure um, as such, but uh, yeah, no doubt once we can get out of lockdown that we can all um, yeah, get together and share a few laughs and, and reminisce a little bit. How much thought have you been giving to the future, the, the non-footy future in, in the last couple of months or, or years? Have you given it a lot? Do you know what it looks like? Yeah, I do know what it looks like. I've I've sort of been lucky that I've been um, I've been connected with good people over the journey. I've played with a, a bloke who I'm going to be working with in property um, in a cult spirit of Carlton Golf Day in my second year that um, has helped me over the journey. I've done a lot of work with him that I'll um, I'll basically get stuck into. But at the same time, there's no rush. I'll, I'll just take a bit of time just to uh, hopefully go away somewhere. It's always been part of. Yeah, my life's doing something outside of, of football and um, getting experience in other industries. And I, I sort of thought probably three years ago, I'd, I'd love to do list management or a head of football role in football, but I'll probably take a bit of time away from football and do something completely different and just challenge myself in another way. And, and who knows where that sits down the track about whether or not I, I want to get back involved in football. But I think uh, just a new challenge of doing something completely different really um, yep. excites me at the moment. And would you encourage others as their careers unfold in the AFL to have that outside interest the way you have from an early day? Yeah, I think the, the club and the AFL, I think, are, are understanding that now um, more than ever about having a better balance. And I, I suppose the way in which the AFL, um, more due to the fact of COVID, they gave longer pre-seasons or longer off-seasons, sorry. Um, with the hope of guys doing some study or some work in that period, which I think is really important, because not everyone's going to play for for 16 years. A lot of guys finish after three or four, um, and then you know, have to step back out into the real world and almost start back from scratch about when they're an 18, 19 year old and go back to uni. So sounds like you've had that view, even though you had an elite talent at, at the chosen professional caper, that you needed something else in the back of your mind. Yeah, my old man was was big on me doing doing things that. Um, I think, first of all, interest you as well. I think it's important. Um, but I've had other good mentors around that have really pushed me to, to do other things. And you find out what you do like and what you don't like. So um, don't think that doing a course that whatever it is, and if you don't like it after a few months, well, yeah, that's not for me. I'm not interested in that. Let's, let's try something new. Mark Murphy, the son of John, has the first pick of the NAB AFL draft. Do you recall vividly those days? I mean, you had to, had to make a decision to go father son to which club, and there was a lot of press even for the relative time without yeah. the saturation that it's become. You had that issue, and then it was the number one overall pick, effectively. So you had the double layer, and then you had the the scrutiny in the in the thirteenth game of footy where you got targeted. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, you're right. The the coverage of AFL was yeah completely different. It's weird now talking about back back when I first started and one of those guys now, but. Yeah. Uh, it was a little bit different being a father and son um, opportunity and saying no to, to Brisbane Lions and they, uh, they'd they come off, you know, four uh, grand finals in a row and obviously winning that three-peat as well and uh, Lee Matthews was was coach and, and Michael Voss, uh, captain, having to, to call those guys up and say, oh, um, I'm not coming. It was pretty difficult but um, I think that held me in good stead, you know, 
rather than just let my manager do it or, or let the old man say, oh, no, he's not coming, to get on the front foot and say, oh, thanks for everything, but I'll, I'll go put my name in the draft and stay in Melbourne. So it was, it was pretty daunting calling. Probably the, the best player of all time is a legendary coach. It was, uh, it was tough work. How did he take it from memory now? I know it's a long time ago, but how was he? Uh, from memory, it was, it was pretty good. He wished me all the best, understood, understood my decision, but um, yeah, I think the way in which they had a crack at me the next few years when we played them, I think they probably, yeah, they, let, they remind me of my decision to, to not go there. Poor play from them to do it that way or? Oh, no, so it was all very in love and war. It was all fine. It was yeah. more just sort of a lot of niggle. And a, I, th- I don't think Jonathan Brown really liked me for a few years, but I think, um, yeah, having a few beers with him recently, he's, uh, it was pretty funny just talking about how he used to wind the, uh, the troops up back then to get into me because I didn't want to go there, being a, a Fitzroy. Well, obviously, he went up there as a father and son pick as well. So, um, anyway, it's all a bit of a laugh now. At the Melbourne Cricket Ground, a Messiah moment is at hand. Three years in, you, you had a, a very high standard person come to the club in, in Chris Judd, a, a guy you've become very close friends with. What did it mean for, for you? You were still only in your third year. Yeah, I played my second year, getting probably tagged nearly every week, and it was getting pretty frustrated. And, and I, I wore the number three because of Michael Voss and Chris Judd. And then, uh, yeah, when we knew that we were getting Juddy, I was pretty pumped uh, to better play with someone that you idolised when you were when you were growing up. And I think, yeah, as soon as he walked in the door, it's, it's sort of been well documented. He, his, his high standards and everything, the way in which he, he did, he, he carried himself, um, just raised the bar a few notches and everyone was like, well, if it's good enough for the best player in the comp to do this, it's good enough for me. So not to say we didn't have some great leaders at the footy club in the first couple of years, but our best players were guys who just enjoyed having probably a good time. Guys like Pro Fev, who he'd probably admit that he um, is a superstar, but uh, in terms of guys who wanted to, you know, model themselves off, probably not the ideal bloke, but um, Juddy was certainly, you look at him and go, well, he's the best player in the comp, I've just got to toe the line to what he does. Just your learnings out of him, not, not yeah. just through footy, I mean, you've mentioned, you've already touched on the football side of things, but the, the life side of things and, and what lies ahead, have you delved into his outlook on what, you know, lies ahead for you as well? I've been lucky enough to delve into the mind of Chris Judd, which is quite complex. Um, but he's, he loves, um, obviously, the stock market and loves looking at a different perspective on, on a lot of things. So he's great to talk to. He's a very well-balanced person and he wasn't always just about footy while he was playing football, which is um, something that I took on board as well and always try to have interests outside of just playing football. Because um, when you do have you know, poor periods or poor games, and you just constantly look at yourself as just a footballer, um, sometimes you can get down on yourself. So to have something outside of that where you're, you're doing something or you're achieving something else is, is really important. So 300 games jammed into the, the career, a um, couple of um, best and fairest and All-Australian, a, a season where the coaches said you were the best player in the comp, and then you, you take over from that man, Chris Judd, as captain for, for six seasons toward the back end of your career. Yeah, it was a pretty pretty tough little period being captain, but yeah, I sort of wouldn't change it. It was, uh, it was certainly... Uh, made me a stronger person and, um, yeah, it was, a, it was a real honour to lead the footy club. Was it the biggest change you can reflect on now? It made you a stronger person? Prematurely, well, maybe, is it? Yeah, well, yeah. it was either going to go that way or go the other way and, and hate everything. So, um, <laughs> it, uh, look, it was, it was tough because we, we weren't winning games. It was, when you play for Carlton as well, it was obviously a lot of spotlight when you're, when you're captain and then when you're a former number, number one pick as well. It's sort of um, the perfect storm almost for... Uh, when things aren't going too well, that everyone can sort of jump on board and, and sort of push you down a little bit. So you feel like you're letting um, you know, your family down or, and your, your, you? your fans. Like, yeah, yeah inevitably you do because they're coming to support you and they're feeling they're riding the bumps with you as, just as much as you're copying it out there. Did you look back, Mark, and, and wonder why me, given you didn't get the premiership success that so many others of your era got? Do you dwell on that or is it just you're always going to be a one club player from the outset? How, how do you marry, manage to marry those two conflicting thoughts up? Uh, yeah, there's obviously the, the one thought of, you know, having um, you know, pride that I was able to stick it out. Like yeah. the, the easy option was probably to leave when things weren't going too well. I knew that I couldn't preach these guys week in, week out and then go and leave. So. Um, there was opportunities to do that, but I thought, you know, I'd rather, well, I want to be a one club player. I think the, the words from my old man as well, from when he left Fitzroy to, to go to North and South, it didn't work out for him. I think that he got in my ear a little bit about, you know, sticking fat and doing the right thing by a footy club. And yeah, I think that sort of, it, uh, sort of weighed in as well with me. 
Now, now that it's all said and done and you don't need to worry about what you say anymore, yeah. who was or which club was closest to getting you out of there? Because there were regular approaches from not just Victorian clubs, weren't there? Towards the back of uh, 2015, um, and Mick obviously got the sack halfway through the year and uh, it was a pretty tiring couple of years and I thought it would probably be the best thing maybe to, to leave. That was the, the way up that I had in my mind. Do I get a fresh start? Um, or do I really dig in and, and back in the new coach? And yeah, it was probably, Richmond was probably the one that in, in a 2015 that there might have been a chance to go to. I think they took Chris Aaron, I think, at that, at that point that they agreed upon um, at, that, at that period. And then, as I said before, like it sort of it didn't really sit well with me thinking about leaving. So um, that was probably the, the closest I came to, to probably making a move. Um, and then in 2016, I thought it was a pretty good move when they didn't go too well. And then a year later, they won it. So that's the way it goes. Gibbs, pick up was clean. Murphy measures things up. Banana ball. He couldn't have. He has. That is brilliant. Getting to the 300 games, um, you put yourself into a list of only five others had done it at your club. Um, I mean, there's some famous names on it. Do you reflect on that now that you, you can? I mean, you're looking at Bradley, Duell, Simpson, Nichols, and Silvani. Yeah, some greats of uh, the AFL in that in that bunch. So I certainly um, am really proud to be part of that group. But I know when Simo played his 300th game, he got to meet all of them and have a photo, and I didn't get any of that. So at some point, <laughs> hopefully we can get together and uh, and have a beer. I know I think Bruce is pretty hard to catch up with, but um, he sent me a great email in the, before my last game, which oh, is which is great to to get and. Yeah, Sauce, Sauce had a, a, a number of chats with Sauce prior to um, my throwing out game, which is which I've I really valued. Uh, and Sticks, he called me up. I think when I was a few games out, said I'll make sure we're getting together for beers when we when we can. And yeah, I'm, I'm sure that time will come where there'll be a club function and be able to spend some time with some of those guys, which will be good. It's a source of pride for, you, isn't it? I can hear it coming out of your out of your being. Um, the fact yeah. you stayed. Yeah, there's, there's no regrets, are there? No, there's no regrets. Mark, really appreciate the uh, openness today as no you worries. reflect on the 16 years and, and what lies ahead. Thanks, David. Cheers, mate.